Hi, boys and girls. Uh, this is day four, chapter 22, uh, pages 254 and 255. Uh, so far this week, what we've been talking about are the theological virtues of faith, hope, and love. Uh, those virtues, again, are good habits uh, that uh, become just part of our way of life. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, these things called, these people called saints. And these saints are the human embodiment of the uh, theological virtues. Uh, let's start reading right up top where it says, We believe ever since uh, Jesus first preached the message of love, people have followed him. From the very beginning of the church, Christ's disciples have given witness to their faith in him. Some of them were inspired by the Holy Spirit to record their stories in the New Testament. These stories tell us of many other disciples who believed. These disciples spread the good news of Jesus Christ, followed the teaching of the apostles, and lived as a community of believers. Many of these early disciples were martyrs, people who would rather die than give up their belief in Christ. I'm going to highlight that sentence right there. We have talked about this in class. A martyr is someone who has given up their life due to their belief in Jesus Christ. People who have chosen to die rather than say that Jesus Christ was not their savior. Let's continue reading. The word martyr comes from the Greek word witness. Let's highlight that as well. Uh, we give witness to Jesus Christ by what we say and what we do. So it only fits that this word martyr comes from that word. We remember these and honor these martyrs and the many others throughout history who have given their lives for their faith. <clears throat> now we're going to talk about different uh, martyrs. The first set of martyrs or group of martyrs are the martyrs of Vietnam. Let's read a little bit about them. In the 16th century, Christian missionaries first brought the faith to Vietnam. During the next three centuries, Christians in Vietnam suffered for their beliefs. Many were martyred, especially in the years of 1820 to 1840. In 1988, Pope John Paul II proclaimed a group of 117 of these martyrs as saints. The majority of those honored were lay people. Uh, lay people means not religious, not a brother, a sister, or a priest. There were also many priests, some bishops, and religious sisters and brothers. Many of them were missionaries. Andrew Dong Lak was a Vietnamese priest who was martyred along with Father Peter Tai. I'm going to highlight these martyrs' names. I do not expect you to memorize them, but I do think it's important for us to look and learn at some of the saints' names. Andrew Trong Van Tram was a soldier and a later, later an officer in the army, so he had to keep his faith a secret. In 1834, the authorities discovered that Andrew, who was Catholic, was helping the missionaries. His position as an officer was taken away from him, and he was put in prison because of his faith. He was given the chance to he was given the chance to be freed if he would stop practicing his faith. He refused to do so, and in 1835 he died for his belief. Andrew Deek Nguyen was a wealthy farmer who contributed to the church. He helped missionaries of of the Paris Foreign Mission Society who served in Vietnam. He hid priests who were trying to escape government persecution. Anthony was arrested and beaten because of his faith and because he sheltered these Catholic priests. These holy people made it possible for the future generations of Vietnamese to know Christ and learn the faith. The Feast of the Martyrs of Vietnam is November 24th. We also remember and honor some of the, these martyrs with their own feast days. Andrew Dung Lac 
and Peter Tai on December 21st, and Andrew Trong Van Tram on November 28th. The next saint we're going to read about is St. Josephine. There are many other ho holy men and women who have given witness to Christ and are examples of faith, hope, and love. One example of such a life of virtue is St. Josephine Bakita. This holy woman was born in Sudan in 1869. She was kidnapped at an early age, and the frightening experience made her forget her name. Her kidnappers gave her the name Bakita, which means fortunate. Although she was sold into slavery and suffered greatly, she eventually was taken in by a family who treated her in a loving and kind way. This family was Italian and took Bakita to live with them in Italy. When their daughter Mimina was born, Bakita became her nanny and friend. Mimina and Bakita were once left in the care of the Kenoshan sisters in Italy. It was there that Bakita came to know about God. After several months, Bakita, who was now in her 20s, received the sacraments of Christian initiation and was given the new name, Josephine. It was in J January 9, 1890. Bakita became more aware of God and her love for him grew. She believed that God had led her to him, almost as if it, he had been guiding her by her hand. So Bakita asked to stay with the Kenoshan sisters. She wanted to serve God, and in 1896, she became a Kenoshan sister, a daughter of charity. She lived in the community in Italy, and she cooked, sewed, and did embroidery and answered the door. For 50 years, she was a true witness of the love of God. Her voice was pleasing to the children, comforting to the poor, and suffering, and encouraging for those who knocked at the door. As she grew older, she became painfully sick. But Mother Bakita, as she was now known, continued to witness to the faith of goodness. She did not complain about her illness, but put her hope in Christ. She died in 1947 at the Kenoshan Convent in Italy. A crowd gathered at the convent and asked for her protection from heaven. The fame of her holiness has spread all around the world, and many ask for her intercession. We look to the saints as examples for, the loving, for, the, for living the virtues of faith, hope, and love. I'm going to highlight that. There are many people around us who live by these virtues too. We thank God for all these people in our lives. So looking back at these people, these three of the many, many, many uh, martyrs, people who were killed for their belief in Jesus Christ, they lived lives of virtue, lives of faith, lives of hope, and most importantly, lives of love.